to schedule some meetings with neighbors, although it's probably all here tonight. Um, and also with potential developers. I've been talking with uh, Berkshire Housing, and it really seems like they're not going to be the people to do rental housing. And I'm thinking rental housing is maybe not going to be our best option for this site. Well, Bill, before we get too far, I I'd like to suggest that maybe we talk about the process of, of making a decision, filling out the details of what we've uh, undertaken, you know, how to create an RFP, uh, that sort of thing, with, in, with appropriate input from, from all parties, everybody. Yes. Uh, right now, we've only spoken to some of the local people noticed in the minutes, I distributed a memo to the board at the last meeting where I gave my personal opinion, not the opinion of the board, mm -hmm. that um, what the Affordable Housing Trust should be focusing on is the unmet need for the community in affordable housing. I mean, after all, we've been meeting for two or three years now. We're very fortunate in Great Barrington to have Construct, Berkshire Housing, and the other kinds of people. But by very nature, they do rental affordable housing. Yep. And the unmet need that I think that this committee has a unique opportunity, and what I put in my memo, uh, is to do, well, I'm going to call it owner-occupied workforce housing. Mm -hmm. To me, the real attraction of having a parcel of land is that we can get Habitat Humanities to come here. We've been trying for years to get Habitat Humanity to come south of Pittsfield because they're the people that can do the kind of housing that we really miss here. I mean, right now, it's so expensive for a first-time home buyer to go into the marketplace. What I want to do is see that we can have single family houses with green space around them that are energy efficient, that are really, really affordable. Yes. When we talked to Habitat for Humanity, they told us that they're building houses, not including the land, right. not including the structure, for $125,000, super energy efficient mm -hmm. houses. That's this year in Pittsfield. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that's what I want to do. That's what I would advocate to this group yes, that we pursue. I, I feel I'm moving in the same direction after, I, I think if we try and do a rental, we're locked into too many units. Basically, I want to look at this and say, how do we get affordable single family houses for people who are young people who are buying their first house or people who who don't have a limited income uh, to, to buy a house, to build equity, to, to, to have a place of their own. You know, 40 or 50 years ago, a developer would come in and they would build a, a, an inexpensive house. That can't happen in Great Barrington now without right. some no one can build an uh, leverage. Right. You know, and what we're leveraging is the land. Land, we've talked to so many people who've uh, told us that the one variable, the one expensive part is the cost of the land. Yes. We're very fortunate on the Alden site that we have a seller who has willing to work with us to um, provide uh, at a, a reduced <coughs> price uh, a piece of property that I believe can 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 meet that need. I, so I, I don't I don't mean to you know I just I've been thinking about this a lot. I yes, happened to look do. at the meeting minutes where Shep had um, um, edited down my comments, and um, uh, I just wanted to emphasize my position is I want to do mostly single family, maybe a few one family, you know, two family, two to 
one to four family houses if possible with green space, with energy efficiency. That sounds like a good goal to me. Sounds like what the goal we need. I still think we need to keep rental in the back of our mind. Well, it's a little more realistic. I, I, I like your idea. I like your idea how we can build those inexpensively, but reality. I think we could have some rentals if we have uh, two family units. Um, you can have a, a three family house, a three bedroom house, and a um, one bedroom rental um, for bank loans and things. Sometimes mm -hmm. easier to have the additional income in one rental. Is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. um, and if Habitat were to come in and do a project like this, <coughs> would there still be deeded restrictions for yes. affordability? There, there has to be. Okay. Um, because we're purchasing the property with CPS funding, if we get approved, right. it can only be up to 100% of area median income, which for a family of four is now, I think, 78,000 and change for the household. Uh, family of four. That the area median income is actually 78. That's right, and that's 100%. Uh, I also talked to Mass Housing, and they have a program a grant program which will help us with um, designing water and sewer extensions to unlock affordable housing development sites. And they were enthusiastic about this um, because that's the biggest thing we need to do. Yep. So, and this money, that program is funded? It's grant funded. And they have but they have available. funds available? Yes. Who's the source? Mass Housing. Mass Housing. <clears throat> so I, I'd like to talk about what the goals of the committee are for, for this land so that we can be clear. I know that many people on this committee have wanted to keep our options open uh, in terms of rental housing or not getting tied down into just single family housing or other things. I believe that we can be, uh, uh, and the reason they wanted to keep their options open was they wanted to talk to developers and uh, you know, nonprofit uh, you know, do housing developers to find out what they wanted in an RFP so that we would be successful when we put an RFP out there because we didn't have a partner who have the technical knowledge to be able to develop it and, and, and fund it. I believe that we have more control than that as a town, as a community, as a neighborhood, mm -hmm. that we can dictate or at least prescribe the edges of the RFP um, and, and, and have some control over what we're looking for uh, and still keep some flexibility for, for, mm -hmm. for going forward. We know, for instance, that we want green space. Mm -hmm. We know, for instance, that we want housing that meets the community. You know, we, we know, for instance, that we want super energy efficient right. housing. Um, um, and, and, and I'm sure there's a many other things that we need to, to talk about for that, including the number of units and right. that kind of thing. Um, Carolyn said she was going to be here tonight, but I don't see. Out there. I just don't have my official shirt on, so. <laughs> Can we introduce Carolyn Valley from Habitat? So I'm the CEO of Central Berkshire Habitat for Humanity, so I'm here tonight to hear from you and what your desires are and see if it's something that um, what you guys want is something that we can provide with uh, humble listeners and then active doers. So I'm happy to talk to anybody and I'm just going to be listening until I hear anything that you might have a question about that I might be able to answer. We do need to say that because we're a public board from the town, we have to put it open to anybody. We can't say, here, Habitat for Humanity, do it. We can't sign Carol and her group up ahead of time. But um, I think in, in well, that would be part of the RFP. It would be part of the RFP that goes out. So people. I think that um, 
some of the CPC people thought that we could uh, pick and choose who our developer would be. And uh, to a greater or lesser de degree, we know who the players are, we know who would be interested, and we know the talents, and we can um, facilitate that, but we can't right. prescribe it. And Construct is also very interested in um, managing some and things. Yeah, we just walked in the and other things. Yeah. I think it really would, it might be helpful to say that the the trust is a sort of a different kind of entity, and it was uh, created by the town for us to act as a potential partner with the CPC. Um, and there are a variety of different views that each of us have as to what can be done there, but I will want to want to emphasize that we. We do want to hear from all of you, and this will not necessarily be the, this will not be the only time we're willing to do that. Um, for those critics of, of us at the CPCs that said that we didn't say anything, our feeling, the reason for it was that it was a CPC meeting, and we didn't think that we had the ability to interfere with what the CPC was doing. It was not our meeting. But this is the first step in getting the views of, an, of all of you, and we're really serious about that. Um, when we talk about the difference between ownership or rental, um, we're also, the Habitat for Humanity it may be the we go the ownership route may be the best route for us because the rental units that the CPC would need, and in full disclosure, I happen to be on the CPC board, um, the CPC would need would be greater than the CDC. C Community Development Corporation of Southern South Berkshire, yeah, would be more than, would be essentially all rental and would be greater than any project that we would put on the property. And I think that the same is true of Berkshire Housing and Development. Yes, I've talked to them. That we've talked to both, I, we've talked to Melton a bit on this. And um, as I say, I'm on the CDC board. And I just give you that as a sort of a framework of where we're going. Right, plus there's been a lot of, you know, it's gonna be close to 90 units thanks to the CDC and Berkshire Housing. Not, right. not, not well, the Alden property. Not the Alden, no, not the Alden property, no, no, no. But in Great Barrington. Great Barrington. Red Street and South Main. The CDC is over the next property. property. All of those are rental units. All those They're are rental units. units. And none of them are ownership That's right. units. Right. Can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Can you hear me all right? Speak it up. Oh. Speak loud. They can't hear you, Jonathan. Oh. Speak louder, Jonathan. I'll try. <laughs> uh, I'm in rehab, so it's better. I know you are. Um, um, I love the idea of, of all single family. Uh, I would ask Carolyn whether she has the capacity uh, to do that in over how many years. And also, from a zoning standpoint, uh, if we had uh, 40 units or less, we wouldn't I took a pass at an RFP draft only as a vehicle for discussion, and it's only my ideas, and I don't know if you want to hear what I was thinking about. Uh, I do, I'm, I'm an architect, and I work uh, as a project manager on large projects, so I'm familiar with, with writing RFPs, which is what I do for a living. So, um, I can simply, you know, give you my ideas, if you like. They haven't been adopted by this committee. Sure. They're only there. Um, the intent is to provide affordable, 
community housing compatible with the neighborhood. And the pro pro proposal should adhere to the following parameters. A minimum of 10 to 20 affordable housing units with a limit of no more than 32 total dwelling units. Emphasis should be on owner-occupied dwellings but may contain a mix of <coughs> rental in one to four family structures. Priority will be given to green space, which may include gardens, buffers, and recreation areas. Ideal housing units should be affordable at the 100% of area median <coughs> income for a family of two to four. Consideration will be given to shared community facilities along the model of co-housing, zero lot line developments, or other facilities held in common. Development should be turnkey and should include management and assistance with qualifications and financing. The successful applicant must hold community outreach meetings in Housatonic before the proposal is finalized for construction. All local codes, including the stretch code, must be adhered to. Additional considerations will be given to near net zero and solar ready development. I do. If you want. Okay. I was just going to read it, but it didn't make up. And this is only a draft. Yeah. Thank you. It sounds like it's a lot of the lot of the marks. Yeah. And it's not dated. Fred. <coughs> I have a few copies. I'm sure you'll share it. So, Fred, I have a question if you could. This uh, is only a draft. Yeah. Two more. Please pass them around and share them. So, I have a question. Co-housing zero lot line development is. Uh, I have a vague idea about co-housing. Um, co-housing are primarily single family units, sometimes freestanding, sometimes shared party walls. But a lot of the, uh, all of the facilities are held in common kind of like a condominium, if you will. So the land is all owned jointly and you still have your own home there. You own a share in a large housing unit. Zero lot line is an idea that we used to explore. I don't, it basically, if you've got a parcel of land that say, 75 or 80 feet wide and you have 20 foot setbacks then you've got 20 <coughs> feet on front and 20 foot on the back you only have um, 40 feet to build a house in the middle so you end up having a front yard and a backyard this basically shoves the house all the way to one side of the lot so you have all of your land together it's it's nobody's doing it What's the benefit of that? The benefit of that is that you have all the yard that you can enjoy in rather than space. having in one space rather than have a little bit in the front and a little bit in the back. Oh. Okay. So it works. So um, I found two more copies. Oh. It's only a draft. Yeah. It builds on what I talked about for the last year. 
Yeah, I like the idea of a mix of uh, rental and yes, single family. Yes, I like that. Um, I, I think going forward, we need to talk to to Carolyn, to Tim, to others who are our potential uh, respondents there. Before Jonathan was cut off, he was asking a very interesting question, and that is, um, um, yeah. Habitat tends to build one or two houses at a time in kind of a linear fashion. They finish those up and they go on to the next couple. Well, if we're talking about building 10 houses, that could take several years. That, that was Jonathan's question about that. And you, you're um, more of the expert, so I, I so turn to you. So we're completing six houses that we started. In, we started them in September. And through a Home Builders Clicks partnership with a bunch of contractors, we will have finished those six homes within a year. So if we were to partner with this, we would have a phased-in schedule. Um, because we also have to make sure that the people that are purchasing the homes sure. have the time to do their sweat equity <coughs> and learn all of the things that are necessary to be successful homeowners, go through financial education. And um, when there's a condo association or a townhome association, there's leader resident leadership training that goes with that as well. So it, it's not just we're going to build a house and just move people that um, into them. It's about developing all the skills necessary to be successful where they are going to live. But we, we're happy to explore what the neighbors are looking for, what our partners, um, both Construct and um, CDC of Southern Berkshire, we all work well together and we know how to play in the sandbox well and, and make sure that the neighbors are happy and the people that are going to live there have a, a really great environment in which to thrive. What the charge of this committee is and what we want to do is to create affordable housing or make housing affordable. We've had some other plans where we have grants to keep people in the houses mm -hmm. to uh, help with repairs if you're needy and, 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 and you can't, so that that's another level of affordability to keep you in your house. We've also had some um, down payment assistance programs that we've uh, been administering. But the bottom line is that just isn't the housing stock available at an affordable price um, so that a young couple starting off or someone else who's it not lucky enough to have their family house or, or to have one of those you know, mega, mega jobs that pay tons of money uh, can live in Great Barrington still and, and, and <coughs> raise a family, build equity for themselves. <coughs> John, you had a, a question about sort of, sort of where we're at as a board with this? A timeline would be helpful. Yeah, a, time, a timeline would be helpful, and also I think there is a, I'm not sure we're all on the same wavelength, but that's. Well, you want to elaborate on <laughs> well, <laughs> well, some of us want to keep the ideas of rental alive, right. yeah. some of us don't. Well, I think we can combine rental and home. We should keep it for rental too. So, uh, but not just rental. No, not just rental. The combination. I don't see that we can build rental housing. I don't think any developer is going to take that on unless we build too many units. Like the construction of it or the management of it? The manager, the construct, I'm sure, would be happy to manage it or something like that, but building it. locked into too many units if you try and do that. What do you think, John? You, you were just well, on the board of the CDC and it seemed like you needed at least... Well, well the CDC is... 36 units. It, it's, it actually, it's 45 units, but we're not talking about the same thing. This is, this is a different kind of project and if 
and you know, quite frankly, if the board, if the if the sense of the board is to build, uh, to go after home ownership, I'm all for that. I'll be for that. I'll support that because we can, as Fred said, we do have a um, mortgage down payment program which helps right. the owners buy the home. And we've, we've done three so far, but we have a lot of CPA money to do more of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has to be a consensus view. Um, the projects that I've been involved in have all been rental, principally with the CDC. We, June from Construct came in about a year ago and talked to us about some of the challenges. Right. We, you know, talked in turn to all the other uh, local nonprofits. But I remember June talking to us about how the funding, and I, I know you guys, Tim and, and Carolyn, can understand this, the funding for rental units uh, in, the, in the affordable space comes from so many different sources, five, six, seven, 10, 14 different sources who provide grants, who provide uh, funding assistance, all of which have their own requirements and all of which have their own uh, subsequent annual reporting guidelines because they want to make sure that their money is being used appropriately. That takes a certain level of commitment from somebody like Construct to administer the rental units going forward. And what June said was it's just not practical to do that, to have that staff person going and providing all that kind of work uh, for one to four rental units uh, scattered in different sites. That there's almost like you have to have a, a larger development. So well, that that may be, and also I think we have to have more discussion with potential developers. I agree. To see where we're going. <coughs> so that was what the agenda item actually was, to try and schedule some of those. Well, the other part I think that we need to talk about, and Larissa was very, very correct that we need a timeline, is that we need to talk about our other part before we get a developer in here of developing the infrastructure. Yes. Uh, put that in a timeline and look at how that's going to work out. I did the timeline for the... Uh, yes, the I recall you did. And uh, essentially, I, I think we have to wait and meet with people and meet with developers. We're not going to apply for the MassWorks grant this year at all. It'll be a year from now. At the when is their deadline? They, well, it's between June and August every year. We're not going to acquire the property until July, right. even if it gets approved at town meeting. Yeah. And that just, we need to have some sort of plan in place before we apply for that. Right. And we weren't, you know, it's too early. So we're not, we're not going to move that quickly on this. Not going to go that quickly. I think also that we have to listen to everybody in this room and the yes. first and also talk to the various developers who might be available before we figure out what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Right. There is a group uh, over in Northampton, I think you sent me something on that Garfield, that uh, builds relatively small houses yeah. relatively inexpensively. They're very high end. Right. Um, they might be interested in coming out and putting up some houses too, just with conventional bank loans and things. Right. Um, we still have them deed restricted in some way. Something else you wanted to say, Garfield? Actually, I did, and I wanted to just. I'm Garfield Reed, I live at Castle Hill Avenue, Great Barrington. My house is not a castle, but the taxes feel like I had to tell <laughs> But I wanted to apologize. Um, I wrote this down so I didn't want to mess it up. Uh, for my failure to go out and ask questions of the folks in who the town is, and for failing to go door to door to let you know what the project on the Alderman property entails. So I apologize for that and I hope not to make that mistake again. I also wanted to add that I know some of you know me, know that I um, 
protested with you when I could, um, recused myself when I felt necessary as far as the Brooklyn property. Uh, I was vehemently, vehemently against it, so I think you kind of know where I stand. Uh, this particular project is definitely dear to my heart as I was actually raised, if you will, I'll call it uh, affordable housing for people with low income. We live in duplex housing. So this is very near and dear to me. And uh, I may be naive on all the points that need to be hit, but to me, this is something that I feel would hopefully help the young people in Great Barrington and our young people stay here and can afford it and have a place that they can own, call their own, and uh, respect that. And I'm also happy to speak with anyone after any time. You certainly can. Uh, I'll give you my contact numbers after if you want to speak. Thank you. Can I ask one quick question? Yeah. In regards to the community outreach meetings, are we going to let the developmental partners do that, and we're just going to help them line those up, or we are going to be part of the? We're, we're going to do okay. that. First. We're going to we're going to do that first. Oh, great. Okay. Because we don't know who the developers are. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, good. And that could be shaped by the input we get from the residents. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if we have an opportunity here. So um, I think we were all impressed when you came t and spoke about what you were doing in Pittsfield with Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. But I don't think a lot of the people who are here today uh, heard that. And I wonder if there's an opportunity to... Uh, well, I th I'll tell you, Fred, I think they all have views that they would like to express and that we should really listen to them first. Okay. And then we can go on to developers and the like. All right. So, anyone that has a question or would like to speak, just come up to the 